not diminish and make less the value of people's property, people's labor, etc. That is haram. And so this money which is losing value is by the definition of the Quran haram. But we were asleep. Let me conclude myself in it so nobody will be angry with me. We were all asleep. And we didn't recognize that we were being taken for a ride. But had it been an African American, you must have heard his name, a man named Malcolm X. Oh, he used to see with two eyes. <laughs> oh, yes. Had it been Malcolm, Malcolm would have asked, who took my money? And how did they take it? Hmm? And then it would have become clear that my loss was somebody else's gain. Let me repeat that. When my money could no longer buy a camel, it could only buy a donkey. The value of my labor has been diminished by half. My loss was somebody else's gain. Five years later, when I take it out, can't buy a donkey anymore. Can only buy a goat now. And so my one month has now been diminished to one week. If this keeps on going on, I'm going to be enslaved. A new slavery will come upon the world. If this keeps on going on like this, Surely it was time for the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam to stop fighting amongst themselves over popcorn. Because that's what they're doing. Fighting over popcorn. While this massive betrayal of Islam is taking place and we are blissfully ignorant of it. That's the price we pay. When we only have scholarship but no nur. Five years later, when you, when you take out that money, can't buy a goat anymore. Can only buy chicken and chips. <laughs> That's where Indonesia is now. That is where Indonesia is now, chicken and chips. That's where Turkey is now, chicken and chips. Yes. And still we're fighting over Popcorn. Eh? If you're 17 years of age tonight, son and daughter, this lecture is for you. They've been fighting over popcorn. While the slavery has come upon us. The Indonesian rupiah is now trading at about 10 to 11,000 rupiah to one US dollar. And you'd want to know, well, why is the relationship the value of the money always linked to the US dollar. We'll explain to you that tonight. When the Indonesian rupiah collapsed three years ago, dramatically, there was nothing wrong with the Indonesian economy. The International Monetary Fund or the World Bank just two or three months earlier had given a clean bill of health to the Indonesian economy. Nothing significant had changed in that economy when George Soros and, and company attacked hmm? and the banking centers around Indonesia attacked. Singapore, let's put it into the record tonight, is one of them. The Indonesian rupiah collapsed overnight. It was trading I think about 8,000 and it fell to 20,000 within a matter of one week. And more than a half of the population of Indonesia were instantaneously reduced to poverty. There is such massive poverty in Indonesia today that the country is riddled with violence. And our 
sisters, or let's put it, my sister and my daughter and my mother must now sell her body for one dollar. It's very cheap now, one dollar. Yeah, it's happening while those fellows are fighting over popcorn. What about Turkey? It's not by accident that Indonesia was attacked. It's not by accident that the Turkey was attacked like this. Because the Indonesian is different. He's a warrior. He's a fighter. He'll give his life for Islam, the Indonesian. And the Turkish Muslim in the villages are like that. They love the deen and they'll fight for it and they'll give their lives for it. But Israel needs Turkey. Israel needs the water of Turkey. And Israel needs the support and the alliance of the Turkish military of Mustafa Kemal. So in order for the military to take control of the country, and in order for Israel to get that supply of water from Turkey, you've got to enslave the Turkish masses. So do you know? What is the value of the Turkish lira now? At what is it trading? Do you know? It is trading at 1.5 million, 1.5 million Turkish liras to one US dollar. Now, don't you think this is an important subject to teach? Yeah. Yes. And there are those who now will have to teach this subject after I leave Australia. Yeah. Five years later, we take out the money, can't buy chicken and chips anymore. No? You don't believe me? It's coming. It's coming. It's around the corner. You can't buy chicken and chips with it anymore. You can use it as wallpaper. <laughs> the collapse of the international monetary system based on paper money with no intrinsic value, that collapse is around the corner. How do I know that? Not only because I was blessed with the opportunity to study international monetary economics at the Graduate Institute of International Studies in Geneva, Switzerland. I know that because of something else. I know it because of the Quran and the Hadith, that the collapse of the international monetary system is around the corner. When it all collapses, and we come back to this, what will be money? What are you going to have as money? When the Australian dollar collapses, and of course if you had any Australian dollars underneath your pillow, hiding away, hidden away, you can use it as wallpaper. Yeah. What is going to be money after that? Answer is, no, not gold, and not silver, and not dates. It's going to be electronic money. <coughs> electronic impulses in machines, in banks, machines without minds, artificial intelligence. Huh? The plastic you'll use to access the money, but the plastic itself would not be the money. The money is going to be electronic money. So listen to this. I don't know whether you'll be able to digest your dinner now after this. Money is going to disappear. You won't be able to see money anymore. You, you won't be able to see money anymore. You won't be able to touch money anymore. It's gone. Electronic impulses in mind mindless machines in banks. We're not concerned with who owns the banks. We're concerned with who controls the banking system around the world. 